Satan was cross. Why should Henry have a new shape, he grumbled. A shape good enough for me is good enough for him. He goes gallivanting off, leaving us to do his work, and comes back saying how happy he feels. It's disgraceful. And there's another thing. Henry whistles too much. No respectable engine ever whistles loudly at stations. It isn't wrong, but we just don't do it. Poor Henry didn't feel happy anymore. Never mind, whispered Percy. I'm glad you're home again. I like your whistling. Goodbye, Henry, called Gordon. We're glad to have you with us again, but remember what I said. Thomas is a tank engine who lives at a big station on the island of Sodor. He's a cheeky little engine with six small wheels, a short stumpy funnel, a short stumpy boiler, and a short stumpy dome. <laughs> He's a fussy little engine, too, always pulling coaches about, ready for the big engines to take on long journeys. And when trains come in, he pulls the empty coaches away so that the big engines can go and rest. Thomas thinks no engine works as hard as he does. He loves playing tricks on them, including Gordon, the biggest and proudest engine of all. Thomas likes to tease Gordon with his whistle. Wake up, lazy bones. Why don't you work hard like me? One day, after pulling the big express, Gordon had arrived back at the sidings very tired. He was just going to sleep when Thomas came up in his cheeky way. Wake up, lazy bones. Do some hard work for a change. You can't catch me. And off he ran, laughing. Instead of going to sleep again, Gordon thought how he could get back at Thomas. One morning, Thomas wouldn't wake up. His driver and fireman couldn't make him start. His fire went out and there was not enough steam. It was nearly time for the express. People were waiting, but the coaches weren't ready. At last, Thomas started. Oh, dear. Oh, dear, he yawned. He fussed into the station where Gordon was waiting. Hurry up, you, said Gordon. Hurry up yourself, replied Thomas. Gordon, the proud engine, began making his plan to teach Thomas a lesson for teasing him. Almost before the coaches had stopped moving, Gordon reversed quickly and was coupled to the train. Get in quickly, please, he whistled. Thomas usually pushed behind the big trains to help them start, but he was always uncoupled first. This time, Gordon started so quickly they forgot to uncouple Thomas. Gordon's chance had come. Duncan banged about the yard, then he clattered crossly to the station. James was already there, waiting for him. You're late, he snapped. I know, said Duncan. It's that smelly diesel's fault. Rusty tries to teach me how to stay on the rails and then goes off leaving me to find my own coaches. You poor engine, sympathized James. I know all about diesels. One crept into our yard and ordered us about. I soon sent him packing. Duncan was filled with admiration. He didn't know that James was boastful. Sometimes didn't tell the truth. He was still cross when they reached the top station. Sir Handel was hoping for a rest, but his driver thought otherwise. We'll leave the coaches now and fetch some cars from the quarry. Cars, snorted Sir Handel. Cars, I won't. So there. Sir Handel was about to cause a great deal of trouble. Told you, said Sir Handel. time workmen came to rescue him, Sir Handel was feeling rather silly. To make matters worse, there stood Sir Topham Hatt. His message to Sir Handel was brief and blunt. I shall talk to you later. Then he and the fireman left with Peter Sand. Sir Handel felt sillier still. Come on, said his driver, let's get you back on the rails. 
when Sir Handel crawled home, he found Sir Topham Hatt waiting for him. You're a very naughty engine. I hope I can trust you to behave when you next come out of this shed. After hearing that, I'm sure Sir Handel will, aren't you? Sir Handel had been naughty, so Sir Topham Hatt made him stay in the shed for a while. Peter Sam was now busier than ever. He had to do Sir Handel's work as well as his own. He was very excited, and the firemen found him hard to handle. <clears throat> Anyone would think that he wanted to work, said Sir Handel, who was lonely and bored. All respectable engines do, replied Scarloe. Keep calm, Peter Sam, and you'll do well. But Peter Sam was in such a state that he couldn't listen. He collected some coaches and went on his way. But somehow, the faster he wanted to go, the slower the journey became. Sam finally fussed into the station, Henry was already there. This won't do, youngster, said Henry. I can't be kept waiting. If you are late tonight, I'll go off and leave your passengers behind. <laughs> said Peter Sam. Secretly, he was a little worried, but not for long. The conductor blew his whistle and waved his green flag. Peter Sam puffed happily away, singing a little song. I'm Peter Sam, I'm running this line. I'm Peter Sam, I'm running this line. The brake van was in smithereens. Percy's driver and fireman had jumped clear, but Percy was stranded. Next day, Sir Topham had arrived. Toby and Daisy had helped to clear the wreckage, but Percy remained on his perch of freight cars. Sir Topham Hatt is very cross. We must now try, said Sir Topham Hatt, to run the branch line with Toby and a diesel. You have put us in an awkward predicament, Percy. I am sorry, sir. You must stay there till we are ready, continued Sir Topham Hatt, and you really must be more careful with freight cars. Percy sighed. The freight cars groaned beneath his wheels. He quite understood about awkward predicaments. Sir Topham Hatt spoke severely to Daisy, too. My engines work hard. I send lazy engines away. Daisy was ashamed. However, Toby says you worked hard after Percy's accident. So you shall have another chance. Thank you, sir, said Daisy. I will work hard. Toby says he'll help me. Excellent. What Toby doesn't know about branch line problems isn't worth knowing. Our Toby's an experienced engine. Percy had never been to the quarry before. He began ordering the freight cars about. Hurry along, he said. The freight cars grumbled to each other. This is Toby's place. Percy's got no right to poke his funnel up here and push us around. They whispered and passed the word. Pay Percy back. Pay Percy back. Come along, puffed Percy. No nonsense. We'll give him nonsense, giggled the freight cars. But they followed so quietly that Percy thought they were under control. 